I'm on my way to a party in a city that's constantly hard at work and at play. It's a place I return to again and again because there's nowhere as unique, resilient, and flat-out fun as Hong Kong. is a feast and the people of Hong Kong are great consumers. It's a hungry city, hungry for food, for prosperity, hungry for life. Hong Kongers are a canny collection of discerning people who know what they want and where to get it. Blink once and you've missed the latest trend. No one rests on laurels here. Be the best or someone else will be. Hong Kong pursues food, fashion, fun, and finance with a vengeance. Born of a desire for trade in 1842, Hong Kong was a British colony with an eye on prosperity. Together, British and Chinese entrepreneurs turned this island into a powerhouse and created a city that was more like a country, one that remains to this day a unique and dynamic amalgam of cultures. For me, the best introduction to Hong Kong is to ride the longest escalator system in the world and watch the city go by. Hong Kong Island is small and steep, Thus, the city is built all the way up the hill toward Victoria Peak, and people use a series of 18 escalators and three moving sidewalks to go up and down. In the mornings, the electric ladder, as it's called in Cantonese, rolls downhill. Some 80,000 commuters ride to and from work each day. And thus begins all manner of life in this vibrant, hardworking city. Since its founding, Hong Kong has leapt from a few thousand inhabitants to more than 7 million. The density creates a vertiginous skyline above and narrow, intimate streets below. And the nonstop energy and drive to succeed overflows from the many shops into the streets. And it all begins on the escalator. I love this place. Hello, and long time. Hello, How are you? This is my friend Rudy. How do you do? How do you do? Nice Welcome to meet you. Welcome to Blanc de Chine. I'm delighted to be here. The quick turnaround suit is legendary in Hong Kong, but the practice is on the wane as fewer children take up the family business. You've gotten so much slimmer, Mr. Utagawa. However, the tradition of bespoke or made to order is making a comeback in innovative design shops like Blanc de Chine, which translates Chinese culture into modern fashion. This is no 24-hour suit shop, but we are promised the results within a week. No trip to Hong Kong is complete without dim sum. Dim sum, like most cuisine in Hong Kong, is Cantonese. But it took off in this city because it's fast, easy, and it can feed a crowd. You gotta move fast around here, you gotta move fast around here. And what a crowd it is, filling the room with a hungry hum of anticipation. So he's going to feel your pulse okay. and tell everything about you. Everything? Everything. That's a little scary. Well, good thing I don't understand Cantonese. All right, exactly. Or me too. And neither do you. I think he's saying that there's a small something in your left side, kidney and liver. Big problem? More than that. Not a big problem. Not a big so, problem. Okay. Yeah. Once my diagnosis is complete, the herbs are gathered ground that's all there is yeah. and boiled into a tea oh uh, here it comes uh -huh, that, that should cure Ooh. everything okay you gonna drink that well that's the whole point but it smells very woodsy well it is medicine how is it um <clears throat> would you like the taste no you have to finish it that's what the doctor said yeah. and i just think a little medicine at a time you don't want to rush it you know? yeah okay well, no yeah. problem yeah. we got all day no sooner do I get healthy and balanced than Daisuke wants to eat again. I gotta tell you, this sort of looks like a food court. Well, Daisuke. it is, but don't you worry. In Hong Kong, you can get fabulous food at food court. This guy that I really trust with food, he took me here once. And in fact, I'm gonna introduce you to him. What is This that? will kickstart you. Whoa, oh, this is cool. There's a reason this thing is small. That's the smallest glass I've ever seen well, in my life. Well, you know yes. what? You're going to be happy that it's... You, after you drink this, everybody will be seeing the real Rudy. Oh my God. Cheers. Cheers. Good this to see wonderful. you, my friend. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You put it, uh, in, the, maybe, put it in the bowl? Maybe put it anywhere you like. But I mean, in the Western world, people might not like the chicken because it's with bones. 
but for Chinese, chicken tastes better with bones. Razor clam. Oh my goodness. Uh, Fabulous. Look at that. Oh my oh, goodness. Look Beautiful. At look at that. Beautiful. Look at the color, the smell. You see how the skin is very plump? Mm -hmm. That's very important. When you steam it properly, it blows up. Obviously, the fish has to be good too. Here's to long lasting friendship. Long lasting friendship. Over oh, fantastic uh, food. Yes. Night was made for Hong Kong. This town sings at night. Restaurants, bars, the harbor, the city lights. It's a pulsing, buzzing kaleidoscope of color and chaos, and it's my kind of town. In contrast to the morning commuters, hardworking, hard-playing Hong Kongers now head uphill to all the hot spots, many of which sprang up because of the escalator. All over Hong Kong, rooftop bars capitalize on the year-round temperate weather the dizzying views, and the enthusiastic weekend crowds. Rudy, this is quite a posh way to start off our trip. I think it's a great thing to do when you come to Hong Kong to have a rooftop bar experience like Se La Vie. You've got these incredible panoramic views. Have a drink, relax, we get a late start tomorrow morning. We will relax, but no late start tomorrow. We start early. How early? Too early the next morning, we board Hong Kong's famous ferry. Talk about value, the Star Ferry has to be the least expensive, most spectacular short cruise anywhere. I love this. The Star Ferry deposits us at the feet of Old Town Central, one of my favorite parts of Hong Kong. This is where the British first landed. They saw a gorgeous natural harbor and a sparsely inhabited island, and they set up a trading post. Thousands of immigrants from mainland China poured in, and a powerhouse was born. Hong Kong real estate is among the most expensive in the world. Old Town Central is a microcosm of Hong Kong. The past and the present rub shoulders. Edgy art and wafting smoke from a temple mingle in the streets. Staircases lead up the steep hillside and every square inch is packed with life. Old Town Central is eminently walkable and filled with every sight, sound and scent imaginable. There is nowhere better to catch the flavor of Hong Kong, both literally and figuratively. Most inviting is the incense-filled Man Mo Temple. It's dedicated to the god of literature, man, and the god of war, Mo. For generations, students hoping to succeed in civil examinations prayed to these gods. Manmo also served as a place where the Chinese community could meet and resolve disputes. Another legacy of the British, the police married quarters, has been converted into a hip collection of local designer shops and exhibitions. You make watches that are very unique. Just show them and describe them to us, will you? Yeah, sure. So uh, our brand is called Yuan. Uh, it's actually stands for everyone. I started as a brand really to think about you know, how to produce product for the uh, visually impaired and also normal people can use it. To do that, we also inject a lot of really good design concept. It's beautiful. Thanks. One last detour before we eat again. You can't come to Hong Kong without riding the tram to the peak. The British soon discovered that Victoria Peak was cooler than the city below it. Before the tram was built, the Brits paid locals to carry them up in sedan chairs. Today, Victoria Peak is one of the world's most exclusive hilltops. Homes up here can run you fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per square foot, and it's not hard to see why. Stick around until the sun goes down. Nowhere, maybe nowhere on earth, does sunset turn to night so spectacularly. Many of Hong Kong's finest Michelin-starred restaurants are located in hotels, and many of these feature classic Cantonese cooking. Yan Tohin is the Intercontinental Hotel's celebrated restaurant. 
Now to taste the fruits of my labor in Yan To Heen's dining room. Just wait a second. Ah, right. uh-huh. ooh. Look at this that. This is our Yan Heen This is enjoyable. Sabi. Thank you. See, all good dim sums have a way of making what they It's almost like poached, right? So its own juice comes out. So it's almost like having a mini soup of whatever the meat's in, inside. So the skin shouldn't really bother it. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. Looks good to me. Peking duck is this restaurant's signature dish. Right, I mean, it looks very good. The best Peking ducks, well, obviously you, you just eat the skin, but uh, the skin cannot be crispy. To me, it has to be almost like the perfect croissant crust, you know, multi-layered. When you bite into it, it goes, ks, ks, you know, that bit. Mm-hmm. And obviously the flavor has to be good. So, um, but it looks good to me, let's have it. This is proper, this is, this is how it should be. Burst out with flavor, and uh, well, a lot of places serve you pecking duck that's crispy, like cracker crispy. It, it really shouldn't be like that. It should be delicate, it should be, uh, this is right. It's really You're saying this is the best picking duck you've had now. You've had a lot as, of picking duck. Yeah, I have. And this is really good. This is proper. Dice guy, I'd like to present to you my beef. This is <laughs> wok cooked wagyu beef with mushrooms, green peppers, something else. Our Yan Tohin meal is as eclectic and alluring as Hong Kong itself. From the early morning scrutiny by shoppers in the abundant markets to the riot of neon and nightlife after hours, this city's enthusiasm is what sticks. Everything here is full bore, no holds barred, carpe diem. I, for one, am head over heels in love.